clear, starry night blankets the stretch of the Siren Ocean, a day's sail northeast of the Salinor Islands. It's a remarkably calm night, with gently rolling waves cresting and subsiding. High above the ocean, a moon hangs bright, large and imposing in the night sky, casting a long reflection across the ocean surface. Several thousand feet above the Siren Ocean, a large falcon with silver-crested wings glides along effortless, effortless, effortlessly. This bird has lived a long life. She's well-traveled and well-versed in manner of flight, though she hasn't a word for it. She's familiar with the invisible forces that keep her aloft, the same forces that keep her cool and wicks her sweat away during these unending, uh, during these unending hot days. She's hungry. Instinctively and without hesitation, the falcon adjusts the tilt of her wings and positions her body, taking advantage of the shifting winds to bring her closer to the ocean's surface. Her vision is acute. It's a perfect night as the familiar brown circle in the sky, the same one that appears every time the golden one disappears, illuminates the watery surface below. There is food down below, bountiful, large groups of those foul creatures that live in that other realm, the wet realm below. On this night in particular, though, the blue falcon spots a remarkably easy prey. A short distance below her is a bundle of felled and shapen trees, tethered together by rope and covered covered by, by the falcon's account, a large, taut, white skin adorned with colorful designs. To those foul land or water creatures, these colorful designs and patterns would seem perhaps a symbol of power and strength, perhaps to some a symbol to stay away or to draw them in closer. Not for this falcon, however this pinnacle of the animal kingdom. Having spent her life in the sky, she recognizes the object down below, though she hasn't a name for it. She knows these dead floating trees are used by the foul land-dwelling creatures to travel across the wet realm. And like many of these objects, this one in particular has, resting atop it, a smaller container made of bundled wood with water inside, within which a fish laps about, oblivious to the fact that it has been captured by the foul land-dweller stupid creature. This isn't the first time she's fed herself in such an easy manner. Carefully, she tucks her wings in as close as she can, elongates her body, positioning the tip of her beak to point directly at the foul, wet creature below, and she dives as fast as she can. She eschews those familiar cooling forces that typically keep her aloft in favor of an aerodynamic freefall. She's the master of the skies, superior to the foul, wet creature she will soon call dinner and superior still to the larger land-dwelling creature that she catches out of the corner of her eye. Her superior senses allow her to track both the large land-dweller and her future food as she dives faster and faster in pursuit of tonight's meal. Wemby, with your oppressive perception of 16, down below you catch a faint, uh, down below you catch a faint shimmering in the night sky, caught by the glint of the moonlight. You know it for what it is. A falcon is diving to steal the fish you caught earlier today and have kept in a barrel. What do you do? I would try to step in front of it to block it. Okay. So you're going to step in front of the, the falcon? Yes. As it barrels towards, uh, as it free falls aerodynamically towards uh, your barrel. Um, Go I'm going to try to block it. Um, you're try okay. To Are you hitting it with back. something? I'd like to try to just put the lid back on the top of the barrel. Okay. So go to make a, uh, you're trying to do this pretty quickly. The Falcon is moving fast. So go to make a, uh, maybe a dexterity check for me. Sure. I'll be opposed. Did that show up? Or did that not work? So I'll have to get that one later. All right. Are you rolling it in Foundry? Uh, no, I hate rolling it in D&D Beyond. That's fine. Yeah, D&D Beyond is good. It was a 16. 16. All right. As you see the falcon out of the corner of your eye, you quickly, hastily make your way across your um, your your outrigger, and you're able to get to the barrel in time to put the, uh, the lid that was resting uh, on the side of it on top to block the falcon. And the falcon sees this and just spreads its wings and makes its way back up towards the sky you having you having um robbed it of its dinner this this evening um so with that 
You are currently aboard your outrigger, um, floating on the Siren Ocean. Ahead of you, maybe about, uh, let's say maybe about half a mile, um, you see uh, a large ship, a large vessel that you have been in pursuit of for the last, uh, say, maybe about 12 hours. So it's currently night. Um, like I described, the, the moon hangs bright. Uh, the Siren Ocean is, is calm. Do you, um, would you like to give a description of yourself and, and what you're, what you're doing? So, Wimby is around six feet tall, 170 pounds. She has adornments of various different colored cloths uh, over her body. Her hair is a sandy brown and she is currently wearing a rather intricate uh, mask of sorts. Okay. And your your vessel, um, it's a familiar place that you call uh, more or less your home, as you've spent most of your life uh, on the Siren Ocean, um, familiar with uh, familiar with its with its waves and its um, its cresting. What does your what does your vessel look like? My vessel is around fifteen feet in length. Uh, it's a rather intricate sailing ship that has a single mast, and it also has a additional outrigger canoe attached to it. Um, itself has very little living space. Uh, there's not really any place for her to go. Uh, she just sort of sleeps under the stars when she needs to. And Thanks. there isn't really a lot of place to store things either. Okay. All right. So you, um, you, these, you know, you're making your way on the Siren Ocean and you do see this large ship ahead of you again, about half a mile. You've been tracking this large vessel for about half a day in pursuit of, um, a couple friends of yours that you know what you think to be that they were kidnapped by maybe pirates aboard this vessel um, or some sort of bandits of some sort. But whatever it might be, you saw your two friends taken and stowed aboard this vessel and you've been in pursuit. Now this vessel floats before you about half a mile ahead um, in the in the dead of the night. So what do you want to do? I would try to sail a little closer, uh, preferably along the horizon for where they would be located so that they're not able to easily see me. And when I get a little closer, I would lower my sails and take out a paddle and start paddling myself with the tides. Okay, so you take your 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 vessel, and you try to find the best path you can that keeps you out of sight of anybody that might be aboard the ship. And we'll say you kind of anchor, maybe about I don't know, a little over a thousand feet away from this vessel, so that they can't see you. You take your canoe and you take your paddles and you start making your way towards um, towards the ship. And you said you lowered your sails as well. Yes. Okay. All right. So as you approach the ship, um, make a going to make a perception check for me. Is there an easy way to find my character sheet in Foundry? It's been so long since I've used it. It's not. Um, just use if you want. Just use D and D Beyond for now. Sure. Um, is it perception. And we'll yeah perception please. We'll move everything to Foundry for the next session. So I think That's a twenty-two. 22. All right. So as you're gently but methodically rowing towards the ship, um, you kind of take a glance up there to see what it looks like. And it's just a very large ship. It doesn't necessarily look like a pirate vessel. It does look well maintained and well taken care of, um, but it is definitely anchored here. And as you approach, you do notice that it's actually anchored close to um, the shore of an island. Um, 
aboard the vessel, you don't see much activity. It looks like it's pretty quiet. It is rather late in the evening. And um, you're able to make out maybe just one shape moving on the top deck of this ship. Aside from that, you don't see anybody else. Um, so what do you do? How close can I get to the ship? Um, I wanted to paddle a little closer. Could I get closer? Yeah, so the, if you want to get... How close do you want to get? I want to get close enough to the ship that I might be able to board it. Board it. Okay. So what I'll need you to do... Go ahead and make a... Uh, go ahead and make a stealth check. We'll say this is kind of to represent, you know, how stealthy you're being with your rowing and how quiet you're being. That's a 20. All right. Dirty 20, I assume? Yeah, dirty yeah. 20. All right. So you nail it. You're... You're taking deep breaths as you try to stay calm. You're not sure what's a, what awaits you towards the ship. Not sure what sort of threats there might be. But with your big, deep breaths, you're able to calm your nerves and you s silently and stealthily approach the ship. And you are right up on the edge of the ship. Um, the large hall stretches above you. We established the dimensions for the ship a year ago and I don't remember what they are, but it's big. Um, so the wall might be like, it's daunting. It's a daunting task to try to get up. Um, you do see ropes that are hanging there. Um, there's netting kind of adorning the sides. So there are ways to get up. Um, but I would leave it up to you how you want to do it. You might have rope that can get you up there yourself, whatever you want to do or try to do. Uh, I do have rope, but if there is rope already hanging over the side of the ship and a net, try to use one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you do see you and you take like a very small anchor that you have for your um or tell me what, what do you do with your canoe do you anchor it or do you tether it to the boat uh you had mentioned there are some ropes hanging down below mm -hmm. i'll grab one of those ropes and i'll tie it okay so stealthily you you shift the ropes um the sound of the ropes kind of just gently scraping along the side of the boat and you tether it to to your canoe mm -hmm. um and with that same rope um you're able to climb up if you if you so choose you can try to climb up okay Okay. I shall. All right. So you grab onto the rope and with forearm strength, you start pulling yourself up a la, you know, Princess Bride. I've been watching a lot of the Princess Bride lately. So this, I feel like there's going to be a lot of those references. Um, so go okay. to make an athletics. Um, I'll, I'll give you the option, either athletics or acrobatics to um, try to climb the rope to the top of the ship. Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Go That's for it. 24. I have only two people wow. tonight. <laughs> This is not the first time you've stealthily boarded a ship. This is this is just old hat to you. You, just like the Princess Bride, it's just like you're on like a motor just pulling you up. Um, and you get to the top of the ship, um, or the top of the rope, the banister of the top deck right above you. You haven't kind of peeked your head over yet. And what do you want to do? Uh, I just listen for a moment to see if I hear anything. Okay. And... If I don't, I would peek up to see if I can see anyone aboard the ship. Okay. You you pause for a second. And I say with your you have, you know, you have pretty decent passive perception. You you would definitely hear this. It's a very quiet night, it's the dead of night. You hear the shuffling of feet on the top deck. Um doesn't sound like a lot of feet. Maybe it's just one person. But you definitely hear shuffling of feet up there occasional very kind of soft breathing or <clears throat> clearing of a throat occasionally okay. um, I definitely try to peek up to see if I can see them okay so you just lift yourself up just barely enough your eyes just going over the lip of the um the railing along the deck and you see with the with his or her back turned towards you a very large and imposing uh looks like a dragonborn um, standing about, I want to say about eight feet tall, looking out, looking over the rails, um, over the Siren Ocean, the opposite side. So his back is to you. Okay. Is he really close to me? Um, he's on the other, so you're on one side of the ship lengthwise. He's on the other side. So he's probably, again, dimensions of the ship, maybe about 20 feet away. Okay. Uh, well, I've been pretty sneaky so far, so I think I'm going to try to continue along that route. And... Okay sort of hoist myself up to try to actually board the ship itself. Okay. So both hands grabs onto the rail as you quietly 
try to pull yourself up. You swing one leg over the banister, pull yourself over, and just try to gently land down on the um, on the, uh, the 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 top of this deck. Go to make a stealth check. That was an eight. Okay. Not so stealthy this time. Okay. You try to pull yourself over. You don't account for the fact that you're you're wet. You know? You just <laughs> the, the ropes are wet, you're pulling yourself up. You can give a little bit too loud of a thud as you topple over the banister of the uh, the deck. And this dragonborn t- turns and sees you, and he immediately draws a large uh, broadsword. Halt! Who are you? Hands up! Okay. And he um, he takes a few steps over towards you, and um, standing mightily over you, um, orders you to to disarm yourself. To, to remove any weapons you might have on you. Can I lower my hands? To, to you, do that? You, you may lower one. Gonna reach to my side and just pull out a skimitar and just sort of. Do you want me to drop it? Do you want me to hand it to you? <laughs> right, right there on the ground. Okay. And he takes his foot. He like puts his foot on top of the scimitar and kicks it over to the side. It slides down the uh, the top of the deck. Are you brigand? Do you mean to rob us? No. I, I'm not here uh, to rob you. He, uh, he, keeping his one eye on you, he kind of takes a peek over the edge of the boat, and he looks down. Huh. I assume that's your your canoe down there. Very perceptive. Yes, that's my canoe. Can I lower well. my hands? No. You you may stand up. But he keeps his sword out, kind of pointed at you. What are you doing here? I'm looking for someone. Or two someones. Why are you aboard this vessel? Because I saw you take them. You did not take anyone. You did. You lie. Earlier today, there was a small boat. It's now at the bottom of the sea, and you brought two of my people to board your ship. Your people? Who are who are these your people? I mean, you might know them. Maybe. I, I saw you take two of my friends today. You were being... Rather vague. This seems like it might be a ruse for a robbery. Is there anyone else with you? And he kind of looks over past the boat, looks off in the distance to see if there's anything else out there. Um, I'm alone here with you. Well, I mean, we're together right now, so not alone, but... I'm going to make a persuasion check to see if you can convince him to believe you. That's an eight. Describe your friends to me. Well, they are married and it's a husband and wife. I don't actually know if you've given descriptions of them. It's okay. No. So you know, you, you know that they're married and that they're they're two half elves. Okay. Um. Yeah. And one's maybe missing a hand, and the other's missing an eye. So we could say, if you want, we could say you relay that to him, if you want, sure. or you you say what you want to say. No, okay. no, I, that's fine. Yeah. No worries. Um. So, how do you know them? They were drifting aimlessly on the ocean. If you are the friend, why were you not helping them? Did you mean to rob them as well? Uh, no, no, of course not. I... I'm looking for them. I heard they were in trouble. 
You wish to speak with them? I mean, if you're not going to stab me with your giant sword, that'd be great. He takes like a step back away from you, but he still keeps his sword up. He's not super close to you. I will bring you to them. You may not like what you see. He, uh, yeah. what's that? I'll lead the way then. Okay. So he takes a few steps along the hull, um, along the deck, and he gestures towards, uh, towards the manhole that leads down into the ship below. Um, and he says, you first. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. So you start to climb down, um, and he follows, uh, directly above you. And he, you go down one level. Um, one second. So I will just activate this. Um, so you go down one level, um, and he stops there. He says, get off here. And, um, directing you to kind of just exit into this, uh, into the second level directly below the main deck. Um, and there before you, you see an entrance to what looks like a kitchen. Um, and in there you see your two friends. Um, they don't look like they're in the best shape. They are, uh, they kind of have this um, kind of green ichor covering them, and they don't look particularly healthy. They're sleeping currently. They're laying in what looks like a kind of almost like a, a metal bowl of some sort, a large metal bowl constructed of um, what looks like the, uh, the metal bands that go around a barrel that keep a barrel together. Looks like it was kind of constructed together by a number of those. Am I familiar at all of what I'm seeing? Uh, I'm going to make a nature check. Eighteen. Okay. Um, you recognize they've been inflicted with some sort of uh, green ichor, which, if left untreated, uh, will result in their death. And you said they're sleeping, right? They're sleeping currently, kind of in like this, this makeshift large bowl that fits two two half elves. Um, or you do notice, kind of on the ground, in small spots, little spots of little pieces of wood have been eaten away by what looks like droplets of this green ichor. Is the dragonborn still with me? Yes, he's standing right next to you. These are your friends, of which you speak. Yeah. Uh, how did this happen to them? I haven't seen something like this in a long time. It was earlier today. We found them in their, in their vessel. They were attacked by a, some sort of monster that did this to them. A large sea monster covered them in this, in this green ichor. It seems to eat away at almost anything that isn't metal, which is why we constructed this makeshift bed for them. But we found them floating in a boat that was sinking and uh, several of people aboard this vessel saved them and brought them here with the intention of bringing them to the Salinor Islands. And where are they now? Where are the other people that... They're, they're on the island. They've been gone several hours now since since before sunset. Would it be alright if I wait here, or should I go look for them? Perhaps you should wait here and have them come here, I'm sure. Perhaps a stranger in these stressful times wouldn't be the most uh, welcome sight for them. They should be back soon, I would hope. But I would leave that up to you. You run a risk of venturing to that island yourself. They were attacked there by some sort of monster. A monster. I can't guarantee me there isn't more. It was round and it opened up to a cavernous hole. It was terrifying, but they defeated it. And then they went further into the island, into what looked like a cave. Is it any kind of monster I think I've heard of? Uh, is it okay if I just wait here, or 
That would be fine. You can sit here with your friends if you like. Can I get you anything to eat? I'm okay. Thank you, though. Okay. So what do you do? You just you just kind of hang hang behind and just keep an eye on them and see if I can come up with any way of that I might know to help them. Maybe. Okay. And he uh, the dragonborn pulls up a chair for you and, and welcomes you to sit down. He says, "My name is." Diego Magalazala. You may call me DMX. And he uh, pulls up a chair as well and kind of sits across from you and kind of just sits kind of almost like in commune with you over, over your two friends here that are not looking in the best health. And with that, we'll uh, pause for your area and we'll migrate over as the camera pans out of the ship over to the island over the shore into the cave that our players were in last time. And we find ourselves in a familiar cave with our five players here. And uh, welcome back to Artema, everyone. Hey. All right. <laughs> we want to do uh, some, some announcements now. Now's a good time. If do you, you want. want to? Yeah, just do them now and then, yeah. All right, get ready for a tone shift. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Mates of Fate on Saturday night yet again. Holy shit, we're back in the Siren Ocean. This is great. We have a new player. We got great stuff. I didn't know we were doing announcements right now. I'm just using the announcement voice. Yay. Okay. We can wing it. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're super stoked that we're back on like a regular schedule. Oh my God. Thank you for the gift sub, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this boat is amazing. What do we have? Okay, come back Thursday night. We're alternating between Songs of Creation and our brand new campaign, The Broken Cauldron, DM by our very own Alicia. <laughs> and it is amazing. So good. So good. Artemo, we're going to be running every other Saturday night, and we're leaving the other Saturday nights open for charity one shots. So stay tuned for that because we got a lot of fun stuff coming on the pike. If you want some merch, or you want to know what our socials are, or you want to catch up on our old episodes on YouTube, or if you want to make a donation for the charity campaign we're running for Michael J. Fox Foundation, go to matesofate.com. It's on the internet. I don't have this written down tonight. Um, we love it if you gave us a follow, get notified when we go live. What else, Mike? Uh, Sirenscape? Did we mention Sirenscape? Nope. No. So we use Sirenscape for all our uh, terrific sounds, sound effects, uh, music, everything. Thanks, it's Sirenscape. It's pretty great. It so is. check it out. Yeah. It is. We used to think it was bad, and it turns out we were just using it wrong for two years. It's very good. <laughs> so. And welcome, babe. Welcome full time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We're uh, happy. <laughs> We are well on our way to just like glomming on to the, the, the slices and dices yeah. cast. Like next, we're gonna pick up Megan. We're gonna find her for somewhere, and then you know, Megan is fantastic. You definitely should play with Megan. I know, I know. That's she's on. She's on our six month plan. Well, I don't know how yet. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Um, let's play RPGs. Yay, Artema! Artema, let's there play you go. Let's Artema. play Artema. Yay! Thanks for being here, you guys. We love you. All right. So last we, oh yeah, this is where I do my recap now, right? <gasps> yes, um, please. Yes. That's the right. The longest one you possibly can. Just... It's going to be a lot. So, all right. Somebody write this down. I'll go up, man, members. I'll give it to you guys too. I'll just give you the, the short notes. This is basically what I gave, what I gave Wimby, Maeve, um, to kind of get her up to speed on the game. All right. So. Recap of campaign to date. I will try to go through all the key things. Um, the five of you, including Valsina, who is not currently playing, but it was five of you initially, and now we have Wimby, um, were not all of you, but most of you were conscripted by Emperor Salinor on the continent of Dervos. Being magic users, you were conscripted to settle the new land of Artema um, across to the west, across the Siren Ocean. Um, 
leaving the village of Loudwater, you had a choice of one of three locations of which you could go to. I mean, you could have gone to all three, but you would have split the party during the very first session, which would have made life very difficult. <laughs> um, I think the, th the the five of you chose to go to, initially you chose to go to uh, Greenspire. Um, and that was where you initially set sail for. Um, while sailing upon the Siren Ocean towards, ta uh, towards Greenspire, um, you had a rather large storm that you came in contact with. You actually had your first shipwreck. Um, this shipwreck resulted you in landing on an island. Um, and at that point, you basically took control of um, the crew and a new ship that you're going to find. And you're now working together with the remainder of the crew who kind of populate the, uh, the ship that you currently own. Um, so while still technically under conscription, you're not going where you initially said you were going to. Um, you're now headed towards the Salinor Islands. So kind of think, you know, tropical islands, Caribbean towards the equator. Um, Valsina, Isabel's character, uh, was infected with a brain parasite. And the only area uh, that has herbs to cure that was in the Salinor Islands. And that's why you were initially heading there. Um, so that was your main motivation for kind of heading south instead of west like you initially wanted to go. Um, you are getting rather close to the islands after several several weeks upon the Siren Ocean, probably almost a month now. A lot's happened in those three or four weeks. Um, while on the Siren Ocean, the five of you were haunted by a hag in a dream realm you now know as Tel Riyadh um, while sleeping at sea. After several haunting encounters, you learn that the hag's name was Serena, the dead wife of first mate Thalia Harlan. After convincing Thalia to try to talk some sense into Serena in the dream realm, Thalia and you guys realized that it was actually an evil being assuming the form of Serena. She was seemingly defeated in the dream realm by you guys and by first mate Thalia Harlan. No, she was. Why are you saying seemingly? Seemingly? What does that mean? Why would you say it like that? Seemingly? Well, she, she, she just kind of disappeared into the sky. It felt like a Of a the win. dream realm. I'm going to take yeah. that as a win. You won. You won. Yeah. W's a How, W. Do we ever truly win, though? Do we ever truly win? Yeah. Um, cut their fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys found yourselves on an island after the first ship wrecked. Here, you were um, manipulated, basically, into freeing Nevera Barillon, an ancient shadow fae creature who had manipulated the island's entire population millennia prior into worshipping Ula Oti, who's the dark god of the Suma. The Suma is a, uh, a kind of the uh, a race of seafaring people, kind of like the sister sister race or brother race, kind of branched off from the Astra centuries prior. Um, you were able to learn that the Suma and the Astra are likely descendants of this once ancient shadow, uh, this once ancient Fey race um, that inhabited this island. Um, where did the Fey race go? That's a question you have. And what happened after they turned to worshiping Ula Oti? on this island. You don't, you don't know. You do know they disappeared. Um, the five of you with the re remainder of the crew that did not perish after the shipwreck escaped the island as it floated away with Nevera Barillon on, on it. Uh, floated away into the sky, what looks like just disappearing perhaps into another realm. Um, meanwhile, back in Dervos, Emperor Salinor just recently went to war against the Dola Khan one of the kingdoms to the east of Dervos. Now aboard a new ship, the five of you came across a tiny boat floating amiss in the Siren Ocean. Aboard this boat, you found two members of what's called the Blood Rites Guild, Ferith and Lelix Olapfel. Um, aside from that, there's a mysterious Suma pirate that the five of you kept encountering. You learned his name was Gauron Agolthet. Um, the last encounter you had with him was in the Dream Realm, where he was seen talking to Emperor Salinor and Nevera Barillon. All three, and based on the conversation, likely more, seem to be working together. It sounds like their current goal, what they're trying to accomplish, is to find pieces of the Plate of Bonding, an ancient armor set, their motivations for that yet unclear to you. Nick. Your character, Zeph, discovered that Gauron 
is ho was holding your wife and kid as prisoners in the Salinor Islands. Um, you initially thought they were dead. However, you kicked ass and managed to convince Gowron to free them, though you're not yet in contact with them. But they are in the Salinor Islands, and that's one of your main sticking points. Um, the part, uh, the five of you discovered that uh, some people, or at least one that you know, have unique artifacts that allow them to control Telriad, the Dream Realm, better. And I believe, Rowan, you're in possession of one of those bracelets. Um, I think I gave currently... it to Skana. We are switching. Uh, okay, yep. The currently Chaos Agent Rowan has one after encountering Nevera and Salinor and Gowron in the Dream Realm. So you guys are kind of trading it off between the two of you. Uh, most recently, the five of you explored another small island where you found the trapped soul of King Romus, the king of the ancient Fey. Uh, Nevera had turned the Fey people on the island that floated into the sky against King Romus and his queen, Queen Teralia, in pursuit of getting them, getting the people of the Fey people to worship Ula Oti, again, the evil deity of the Suma people. King Romus asked the five of you to help them find, to help him find his long lost queen and to help return his kingdom to glory, to glory. So all in all, one sentence summary, you all were sent from Dervos to Artema in servitude to the emperor. On the way, you took control of the ship, unleashed an ancient evil upon the world. This ancient evil who worshiped Ula Oti is in league with the emperor and is in search of the plate of bonding. And you now have found the ancient king who was betrayed by Nevera. Can we ask one fine, one fine? Yes, absolutely. One final thing: you also discovered in the dream realm that Nevera and the Emperor were disappointed with Garon's progress he's made towards getting access to Malak Tribius, the head of the Bloodrite Guild, of which Ferith and Lalex Olafet are members of and their headquarters is in the Salinor Islands. Uh, for what purpose do they want access to Malak Trivius? They're not quite sure. Um, and that's, yeah, that's kind of a recap. I know that was a good bit, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I have a lot of questions and hopefully it's okay to like bring them up as we go or I'll put in the Discord if it's not immediately relevant. But However you, said you we, want to do it, yep. You said we don't know what the Plate of Bonding is for, but didn't we learn yep. that the yep. Plate of Bonding is used to control dragons? Yes, yes. So I remember. okay, you yeah. did. Yes, I, mean, I thought maybe I hadn't given that to you, but yeah. However, you learned that. Yes, it's um, when in uh, full, when as one piece, it can control dragons. Yes. And we theorize that they want to control dragons, for but we don't know why, right? We, you guys don't remember. Yes. Why. Yeah. Because okay. they're yeah, evil emperor. Dragons are awesome. Dragons, and then also you, they can burn ships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rowan did come across one dragon after when that island was disappearing, floating oh. up into the sky. Um, Rowan actually ended up in some weird realm um, and rode, I think you rode a dragon back back mm -hmm. to this realm. And then uh, the dragon seemed to perish in the Siren Ocean, returning you to safety. That was a tough day. He didn't he imagine that, that dragon, right? <laughs> she didn't imagine Maybe. that dragon. Oh no! <laughs> pants, though, no, no. <laughs> okay. So the go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, and King Rhombus. King uh, Rhombus, yeah. King Romus. King Romus. Um, what did he task us to do specifically? Um, last time you've only you only just met him. You're still standing in the cave. You found his Ooh. soul, um, within kind of trap, not trap, but kind of. Um, magically encapsulated within a sapphire in this cave, surrounded by a ring of stone statue knights. Um, and he basically said, take me from here, take the sapphire with you. He said, we can talk more. Um, but his main goal is he wants to be reunited with his queen, with his wife, and somehow to return his uh, ancient Fey empire that was on that island that's disappeared to glory or to have retribution or something like that. Yeah. Um, do we know where the queen is? Um, Rowan recognized the name. Yeah, I talked to her um, when I met the dragon and before I met the dragon 
on that island that, you know, shot up into the sky. It's no longer here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And what it was, if- She was kind of Rowan's um, invisible companion while on the island. Oh, okay. Okay, I do remember that. And- I don't think you told King Romist yet. Or maybe you did. I'm not sure. Do you remember Rowan? I don't remember. Okay. Okay, final we'll question. say I didn't. Um, who is my character and what exactly do I do here? <laughs> <laughs> Serious question before we get into that uh, that black hole. Um, what uh, what was the name of the dude who had my uh, my family again? Uh, Carl. Uh, Galron. Sure, Carl. Right? Yeah, it's Carl. Uh, Galron. G A U R O N. And his last name is where was it? I just had Agalthet. Agalthet. A G A L T H E T. He's the Suma pirate, right? He is. Uh, yes, he's a Suma pirate. Yep. Okay. And I, how did we come in contact with him? Because it wasn't physical. It was where we were dreaming, right? Or wasn't he the, or no, he was the one that uh, was on the ship back at the the, the smuggling place it's, that Ash, or that Trish, Triscana's character was, yeah. yeah. Oh God. We, we are, we are stern, we are currently on the ship that we stole from him. It's our ship. And did we see him? We. I feel like we we saw him in person. Didn't we kick his ass? Yes, that's why we have we killed him, right? Yeah. Didn't what? I like take his hat and shit? <laughs> so, but then, but <laughs> did I you kill saw... him in the dream realm? No, no. I, I saw two, my family in the dream realm, right? Yes. It's just bad. <laughs> you saw, you saw. Yes, you did. You saw them in the dream realm, right, and I okay. think I don't think you killed Galron. I might be wrong. Any of you tell me if I'm wrong? I don't think so. I think. I think you threatened Galron somehow. He made you to offered the point. a deal, right, or something like that. Like I can, I can save your family, or I can show you your family. And you're I like, think that yeah, might have been what I, I think he opened up a portal to like show Zeph his family, and Zeph like untied his wife in the dream realm so she could get away. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I think maybe it was something like that. And we the question is, did she, did she get away? Yeah. I think he like yeah. I thought you like dove in to the. To where she was and then untied her. Yeah, I think I dove through like this portal or something. And then Zeph was cut off from the whole party, right? Or no? I, I went with him. Trick's loyal. Yeah, and then you battled Galron. I remember it was in this like uh like cityscape kind of. Yeah. Oh god, that's right, that sucked. I felt bad for Yeah, you. the dream bureaucracy Ooh. realm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> so do we rejoin? Are we still there? So you you the 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 five of you i know exactly where the five of you left off or the four of you because Rossina's still aboard the ship you left off in the cave with uh yeah. king king romus we went yeah we went to butthole island uh, well, we, we woke up <laughs> which we woke up and then we were all together else. again gotcha, okay. yeah. which we we then went back to the ship and we thought well there has to be something about it like what was up with it and then we go and we find like chains or something underwater stone tentacle, stone or tentacle. Ten- yeah stone tentacles underwater we follow the stone tentacles down below and then we found a cave we went into the cave and then we found king Rom- romus's tomb i remember being unsure if what i saw was real or not so like i feel like i now have hope that my family is alive but i'm not 100 percent sure mm-hmm. so so zeph's attitude will be slightly different now because he was pretty much fuck this fuck everything but now that he has a little bit more to live for, it might be a little more interesting. Maybe <laughs> fuck you. TBD. Yeah. So we've been in this underwater cave for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you've been here like a year now. <laughs> Six months. Hey, long enough. Long enough to have a baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. to raise that baby a little bit. Yeah. Oh, God. So, should we maybe get out? Could I, use some fresh air? I think so. You finished looting the place? I mean, yeah. you did, we're looting you the did, soul you, of a dead king. Yeah. You did loot the place. You found all the artifacts you could find. All the magic items. But did Triscana find all the lore she could find? Did she? She did. <laughs> <laughs> you have a king in your pocket, though. So you can always talk to the king back aboard your ship. Did she, touch all the thing, did she touch all the things that would make you ask if she touched it? <laughs> yes. I... There's a pebble. There's a pebble. <laughs> Missed opportunity to have a pocket prince. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, pocket prints, yeah. All right, so what are you guys doing? So the four of you are in this cave. It is the map here. We don't really need to use it, but there you go. That's what it looks like. You fought like a sentry, this like sentry creature that was guarding the sapphire and defeated him, obviously. Dope. Look how cool we are. It's a beautiful map. All right, well, if we've looted everything and touched all the things and we're taking this king with us, then um, we'll head back out of the tunnel and try and make our way above surface again, I guess. Making our way. Okay. Yeah, so you're able to make your way out. It was a puzzle getting in here, if you recall. It was mm -hmm. difficult, but you know exactly how to get out and I won't make you redo everything. Um, and you exit out into the night sky. So several hours have passed since you entered. Um, That's again, it? The moon. What's that? Yes. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you all walk out like slightly grayer, um, but it's only been a few hours. Um, the moon hangs high. It's a it's a large moon tonight, um, casting bright lines on the uh, the 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 top of the ocean. Um, it's remarkably calm as well. It's beautiful, actually. Perfect temperature. Really nice night. Little constellations in the sky, um, bundled together, bands of light. If you knew what a galaxy was, it's like a galaxy stretching across the sky. And before you, you see your ship anchored, looks business as normal, rather quiet. Um, a few lights flickering aboard the top of the uh, the deck. So what do you guys do? Oh. Oh. It's good to be on the ship again. Uh, I think we need a rest, a snack. We should probably check on our... Um, Uzi friends to make sure they haven't burned through the pot we made for them. Oh god, that's right. We did that get the time. trunk. We got the trunk for them too, so we could probably transfer one of them. They seem very well, fragile. I imagine the ship would have sank by now if they'd burned through, right? <laughs> I'm assuming that somebody's dumping out the goo, 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 goo. I don't, what is it? Goo? Ooze? Ooze? Almost it, which we could just leave them on the island for a bit, just, you know, until we can square things away, figure out a more permanent solution. But then that's marooning them on an island. What if we don't make it back, then they die here? That's true. <sighs> well, hopefully we can get to the mainland in time before, well, or at least the Salomon Islands. We can do that, or at least have maybe some way of finding soap. Something to get that stuff off of them. Do you think that'll do it, Hopefula? Soap? Really? It's oozing from their pores, is it not? Oh. We had soap on the ship, so. Alright, so the soap's not going to do it, then. You know, something. We need a soap. healer. If the solution had been that this whole time, incredible. You know, sometimes oh, it is just that simple, and you just. Of course it is, you know. Sure, sure. Everyone overlooks the obvious. God, I mean, oh, did, did we give them a bath? No. Damn. Wolfie, have you not been using soap this whole time? Oh, I've been using soap, haven't you? Do you? Show of hands, who's been using soap? What is that exactly? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's everybody's passive perception? Great question. I'm not used to foundry. Enough. <laughs> where, where, where do they put that on the stem? Oh, wait. Matt? 17. Other Matt just taught me that passive is 10 plus your modifier for anything, which means it is 14. 17. 12. 17. Fee. As you're having this discussion on the main deck of the, 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 the piece of ship, you, uh... <laughs> you all love me. You all love me. <laughs> you, um, you're kind of just looking around as you're, as you're talking. And you notice out of the corner of your eye, looks like a scimitar been kind of cast about. Is and then a goblin on board? A, a goblin? And it looks like it kind of drew like, you make a connection, the scimitar has like a, just a kind of like a trail of water. Like where it kind of skated along the top of the deck. If someone sported, should be on the watch. Well, why do they leave the weapon? Then? Where's DMX? I still refuse to call. You find it odd that there's nobody standing guard 
up top the ship. He was on watch, wasn't he? Let's proceed carefully. Pick up the scimitar. Can you touch it? I do. Touch. It's a scimitar. Let's head below decks. Let's find. Hungry anyway. Let's find Dergo. Make sure he's all right. Make sure everyone's he's fine. Right. He's supposed to be here. Surprising that the head of security didn't leave, have someone else take over his post. Maybe the laxative kicked in. The, I'm <laughs> sorry, the what? Um, wait, the, the what now? The what? The muffin laxative. <laughs> Takes a little, little while. Wait a minute. There's a laxative in the muffins? Just a few of them. And the coffee. Don't drink the coffee. The coffee, Rowan? The coffee already does that. Look, I gotta make entertainment where I can, okay? It was, it was... going to debilitate the crew. <laughs> okay. Do it in shifts. It's all right. Big pile of muffins was there this morning. Oh, there'll be big piles, all right. <laughs> there goes. Head below decks. Start exploring. Okay. So you make your way over to the to the ladder that leads below decks, um, and as soon as you get down one deck, you see DMX sitting there. I'm not calling him that. You okay. don't. He's sitting kind of against the wall, just looking forward towards where the. Uh, into the kitchen area that you can't quite see in yet. Derekos, is everything all right? Yes. Where, where have you been? You've been gone many hours. There was an interesting cavern full of puzzles that we couldn't resist. We found the soul of a king. You, you what? I'm sorry, do I owe you an explanation? You, no, you, we, I, have, a, we have a visitor. I like the explanation. This that sounds cool. You, you, you hear a voice from inside the kitchen that you don't recognize. It d doesn't even sound like the voice of the two, uh, the two people you rescued. Peek our head around the door frame. Hello? Hello? It's there in the kitchen sitting before you is somebody wearing rather kind of colorful clothing, wearing what looks like a mask, sitting across from <laughs> DMX next to your two uh, two Bloodright Guild members. Can we help you? I I think I'm being helped already. Would you like some coffee? Do not drink the coffee. Don't drink the coffee. Wait, why don't I drink the coffee? I'm so oh. um hi. We're so happy to see new faces, even if we can't see the faces. Um, what are you doing here? Um, looking for my friends. Found them. Oh. They're in a bucket. Oh my goodness! They belong to you. Okay. Well, they don't belong to me. <laughs> I mean, they're they're married, so they kind of belong to each other. Really? really? You belong to them? No, we didn't mean. No. Belong is a, a bit of a sensitive term here, given that you know they are actual. Fair slaves. enough. Fair, Fair enough. Version. Yes, yes, Holfi. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Yeah, like awkwardly stands up and just like turns um, really stiffly. He's like, I will see myself out. He just climbs up yeah, to go, the top. Go deck. back above decks where you belong. Are we paying oh, him? I don't know. All of a sudden, we feel in some sort of position of power over him. <laughs> I mean, he's we... like eight feet tall and buff as hell. We overthrew. I'm trying to remember room. the power dynamic here. We overthrew because the crew during like the we, shipwreck, and now we've agreed to all work together. But they like no one's in charge here. It's except. like fucking Ving Rhames in Pulp Fiction, just this massive motherfucker, <laughs> just like, yeah, get up there. You, you okay? <laughs> if you're not paying him, you should pay him. That's a good job. We're all just trying to survive at the moment. Hey. Um, especially these two. Um, they were in a bad way when we found them on their ship. Their ship was sinking. We just barely got them out in time before it went under. So I'm glad you're here because we're not sure what to do with them. Do you know how to fix their condition? Do you know what, how they got into this mess? Well, from what I was told, there was some kind of creature 
I... No, Hukuchi. Yes. Uh, yes, the George O'Keefe. Do you know where they were where they were going, or what the remedy is for this? I don't think I know how to fix it, but I can try. Maybe, probably. Um, I'm Triscana. Um, this is Seth and Holthy and Rowan. Holthy, sorry. Oh, sorry, you know. And you are? I'm, I'm Wimby. Uh, sorry, I just had a thought there. I... What? Oh, you're, you're Astra. Very perceptive, this one. Um, Trice gonna, like, very slowly steps forward and seeing if she'll be stopped, like, tries to lift up Wimby's mask. She doesn't stop you. You're still alive. Last I checked, uh, it's really nice to see you. It's good to see you too. How long has it been? I stopped counting a while ago, but almost 10 years, I think. It's been a while. Oh, there's so much you don't know. Oh, your father. What about my father? He's alive. Um, we are. Yeah, he's yeah. really stubborn, so I'm not surprised about that. You should stay for a bit. There's nothing we can do for your friends right now. Um, we're heading to Salinor, and maybe we can find a remedy for them. Do you want to travel with us for a bit? I, I can do that if that's okay. Can I? Can I get my boat? We have room. We can pull it up. Okay. Um, we have extra bunks. This ship is a little too big for all of us on the crew, so we'll be happy to make space for you. Okay. Some of you guys here, get out of my way. And you look over and you see, uh, the four of you are familiar with him, uh, Wimby. You see what looks like a, uh, uh, an old gnome male kind of hunched over, smoking a pipe, trying to get into the kitchen. Excuse me. Back out of the kitchen. Felix von Luckers, the, uh, the boatswain of the piece of ship. Thank you. Just need some coffee. Oh, Felix, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I should uh, try a muffin uh, with uh, it. Uh, maybe not a muffin. Uh, Felix, oh, jeez. Um, well, no, you... how... How are you feeling? Are you like, if you were to say regular or not, perhaps coffee I, would be a good idea. I just feel like I need some energy, you know? Uh, well, hmm. how do you want to spend that energy? You know what? Maybe I get what you're getting at. Maybe I'll have some whiskey. How about the rest That's... of you? Could I, could I get you all a whiskey? Uh... I keep a special stash right there behind the, behind that left cabinet. No well, it. I would advise moving it now that Rowan is here to have heard that. <laughs> so he grabs a... wouldn't do anything for Felix. ...an unlabeled bottle of whiskey down and a few glasses and and pours a few and offers them to anybody who would like one. So what the... Pass. Who is your friend here? Uh, you, are not, you are not... You are Wimby. Hmm. Seems to be every day there's new people aboard this ship. What brings you here? The new people aboard the ship. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> you, you think we are a tavern or an inn, darling? I mean, we are pouring whiskey. You could be. This know. is three more mouths we have to feed. Can I have my own food? It's fine. Oh, well, that's six more hands. Oh, wait, what, wasn't one of them missing a hand? Uh, again? <laughs> Yes, five yes. more hands. One's missing an eye and one's missing a hand. <laughs> That's five more hands. Sorry. Yeah. God 
Wimby, did you join their guild? Yeah, I, I did actually. I didn't have a lot of choice in the matter. I kind of needed somewhere to go and they were looking for members. You must have been up to very exciting things at the other Astrama. I hope that's I, been going well for you. It could be better. It could be a lot better. So I guess you never found what you were looking for. I'm still looking, actually. You, you know each other. You could say that, yeah. She's from my Gorana. Oh. Well. Ooh. Almost family at one point. Sounds Long like there's a story there. Long story. You could say that. <laughs> well, we've got whiskey to drink, and nothing makes a whiskey go down better than a story, so. Um, Triscana will make some perfect spheres of ice for everyone's glass. So this is a, uh, a site you are familiar with, Wimby, uh, though it's been a long time since you've seen another, another Astra perform magic of this sort. It's a welcoming sight. It's comforting to you. You spent a lot of time alone over the past few weeks. I'm definitely going to have a glass then. <laughs> um, this is a dumb question, but does uh, being land sick, does that ever stop? Like when you get off the ship and you walk around and your stomach, like what, does that stop or is that forever? Uh, I mean, it stopped eventually. I, it really depends, like if I'm far, if I'm on the ocean for a while, it's, and I come back, it, it's a whole thing. Where are we setting sail to in the morning, my friends? Well, we're supposed to be heading to Salinor Islands. Is there, do you people have a name for those other than Salinor? Because there's something about using his name for them that I find distasteful. We don't track a lot of the land we don't we just marks of sea yeah we mark the coast for sure and the coasts have their own names and i will tell you what they are in a bit in a bit <laughs> <laughs> right after this message from sirenscape <laughs> but apart from the coast we never really had a reason to care i suppose the scholars did but not the navigators well, it That's... seems like, what are our priorities right now? So, personally, uh, Salinor Island, uh, supposedly my family's there. I, that's where I want to go, but uh, maybe there's something else to the greater good that I'm not going to support because my family's not there. You do also know, just so you guys know, and Wimby kind of knows this, that the two Bloodright Guild members that are currently sleeping, looking very unhealthy, were also headed back to the Salinor Islands uh, to report back to uh, to the Bloodrights Guild. Uh, that they had failed in their mission. Plus, we're after a Perlid cure, so perhaps Sound of Islands is the place to go, unless there's some other piece of lore that I'm not recalling right now that dictates we go elsewhere. <laughs> I can't help my daughter from this side of the ocean, but I know we can't go back anytime soon. So I could maybe at the very least disrupt that bastard's holdings here and could disrupt his dreams, maybe. That's true. We lose Nick. He's frozen for me. Yeah, Nick here. is frozen. Uh -oh. so frozen too. <laughs> I'm here. My camera has given up for some reason. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the role play, and I just didn't know if. Oh, there you there. go. Okay. You're back. Right, You're back. Go. Sorry, yeah, what we were could, you saying, Rowan? We could disrupt his dreams, Emperor Salinor. Don't we have that bracelet thing? We do. 
Although I feel like it's not healthy to keep it. Maybe we should destroy it. Wait a minute. Wouldn't it be better to have it just in case? This is something that you could... Sell. Rain un unfathomable chaos. And you want to destroy it. Well, I got really drained when I was wearing it. You want to try it sometime? <sighs> Not right now, but maybe after a nap. We can take turns with it. So we take turns, then. But yes, let's cause some mischief with it first. Oh, well, there's anyone better at mischief. You can lead the charge on that one. Happy to. Okay. Speaking of, didn't you get a new mushroom, Zeph? Did I? Did he? I think you did. Did he, as he checks his character sheet? Just say yes, and then just go off with the fact that Mike probably can't remember everything, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, let's take advantage of the DM. You, you, <laughs> you can never you backfire. You got I a have new some mushroom. Mary Berries. Have five million gold? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. I did check everyone's gold earlier, because so I didn't know what to start Wimby at. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm particularly good with mushrooms, so you, you steep it in hot water, and I think it um, helps with poison or something. Insight check. And then you, t you, t you, t you tell, yeah, you tell, you tell Triscana what. Um, that is a seven, so. Can I do a medicine check for that? Seems like sure. you, you can't, you can't read Rowan whatsoever. Wimby can make that's a medicine the, check if you want to, if you know this to be true. 23. Never seen 23 medicine before. check, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not bad, but not a 23. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I just say, out of character, I did homework and watched the last session. Zeph did get a mushroom. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. What was the mushroom? I don't remember. I can't remember the name of it, but it's something to do with if you eat it raw, it will kill you. And if you make some kind of tea out of it, it would help with uh, poisons. Okay, there you go, Zeph. That's what you got. Uh, yeah, so I have this mushroom that I'm not sure what it does. Maybe you could tell me. Wait, do you think uh, their condition is poison? Or is it that's something else entirely, isn't it? I just don't... Oh, who? Uh, the blood rights. Uh, yeah, our, oh. our Uzi Ferex, blood rights. Ferex and Lelix. All of them. I don't know. I don't oh. know if that would help, but... Probably not. Could we do a, a medicine check on them? Some, some sort of... What, with the mushroom? Well... Were you just like, take, just like smashing the mushroom on them? Just... No. No, no. <laughs> Trying to understand their condition more, I guess. They, yeah, I, I mean, just by looking at them, it hasn't been that long, right? It's been a few hours, but they don't look healthy, either of them. They're unconscious, right? They're, they're yeah. sleeping right now. One, from what you remember, uh, from what I remember, one was unconscious. The other one was conscious, but that one that was conscious, which was Ferith, is, uh, is asleep right now. Yeah. yeah. You could wake him up to talk to him, um, but yeah. Well, I, up. I don't know if this is a poisonous thing or not. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out later. Do mushrooms work with uh, in the dream world? Maybe we can just give it to Emperor Solinor and Rawl and see what happens. Because you, wanna... you can die in the dream realm, can't you? Yeah, you can certainly commit regicide in the, in the dream realm. Be arrested for that. You, what evidence oh, would they have? That'd be kind of hard to prove, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, if we fail, then he wakes up and then he writes something said, tells his guard, if I die in my sleep, then you'll know who it was, and then. That seems oddly specific. So we plan this then. We move to take him down. We do it right. We take him down 
knowing with full certainty that it'll work. Do you Wait, know? We don't half-ass oh. it with a mushroom. Hi, by the way, it's nice to meet you. Yes, this is a plot to kill the Emperor Salonor. Lovely. Um, Perhaps we should be a bit more discreet. I, uh, I cast message, and I just look intensely at Holfi, and in your head, Holfi, you hear, I'm not sure our new friend isn't working for the Emperor. And I just kind of, like, smile and take a sip of my water. Uh, yeah, you guys hear a, a groan. If the if the five of you are going to kill the Emperor, you're going to have to have a better plan than that. And the voice is coming from Ferrith, oh, who's uh, kind of kind of stirring. Sleep, Ferrith. Uh, he, the husband. Yeah. yeah. And to move over to Ferris. Just laying down. I thought uh, you were dead. His eyes are still closed. He goes, Wimby? Almost, almost like he's in a fever, fever dream. Am I dreaming? You're not Wimby? dreaming. Wimby? His eyes slowly, slowly open. And he, uh, his eyes kind of like adjust as they try to focus on you. He goes, oh, Wimby. And he goes to hug you. Um, but he's got all this green ichor on him. What do you I do? Don't, don't. Wimby. Get back away. Uh, I think that's a really bad idea. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. I forgot. I was sleeping so soundly for a change. <laughs> what are you? He looks around and sees the four of you and Wimby. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What? I was looking for, for the two of you. I, I found your ring, or well, you... <gasps> not your ring, but you fell. Thank you. Which? How did you find that? I knew where you were going, and I went looking. You were. Were you tracking us? I was, and I talked to a few different people who were able to help me find where you were. Why? It's not customary to track others in the Bloodrite Guild. I... I needed to find you. Um, the Guildmaster knows that you failed, and I needed to warn you. Well... Should we give you a, a minute of privacy? And well, this is your your ship. You can stay if you so choose. I, what were you going to say, Wimby? I'm sorry. No, it, I was just going to say, I mean, you were just bothering murder around me, I think. And <laughs> I, I think you're fine, honestly. It's more like analyzing. Yeah, it's... What if scenario, you know? So, Malik knows that we failed in our mission already. Yeah, unfortunately. It seems we were we we're headed back to tell him we failed anyhow. But you seem worried. Is did you hear something else? I was going to warn you to run, but. And you're not really in any condition to do that right now, so... Why Why would we run? We're, we're Blood Rite Guild members for life. I, listen, I... I had heard that... You were going to die, and I, I just... I didn't want that to happen. I... Malik has a hit out on us. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I don't know. Oh dear. Alright. This changes everything. This changes everything. Uh, this is a problem. And he looks at the, the other four of you. My wife will die. 
if we, if we, if we don't find the solvent to, to, to cure us of, these, of this ailment. And I think what I told you guys is that they knew that the, 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 the solvent to cure this green ichor was found on the Sa Salinor Islands as well. So that was another reason that you were headed back there. I, we need to get to Salinor Islands, but but if, I, if we go there, there are many Blood Rite Guild members. Malik's hold on those islands is strong. He could kill us. I don't want to die, and I don't want my wife to die. So, you certainly can't go out in the open. Not like this, no. But do they so know our ship? Sorry. We're probably watching the docks, but would they be looking for you inside, say, a cask of ale? Probably not. But wouldn't Correct. their icker eat through the cask? No, we could try and line the inside of it. Maybe we take this tub or something like it, and then we beat it into a series of strips, line the inside of a cask just enough to be able to, for a temporary solution, get past, get them into a cellar somewhere. Aren't they in an iron cauldron or pot? Right now something. they are, yeah. So something where we can, it doesn't have to be a cast point, it's something where we can hide them and look inconspicuous, carrying them on docks back off of the ship, like some of the so, other cargo. Why do we have to carry them? Why do we have to carry them on the island? Can't they just stay in, in the ship? They could do that as well, but it also puts them at risk, us not being on the ship, maybe. Someone comes aboard to take a look. Or we're looking out, looking for the solvent. I could always off. I could stay on the ship and offer them coffee, and then. Or well, I think you're the best um, tracker of all of us. You would you be you would be the best at finding what we're looking for. I think. The best at stealing it, maybe. But we could leave them in the care of the crew. They are more than capable. Oh, speaking of which, I'll uh. I'll cast a message to our navigator. I I'm s hope you're not sleeping. We need to set a course to Salinor Islands tonight, please. I respond to you in the same way. Uh, yeah, you can respond. You can reply to this message. This message, okay? Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. It's uh, you hear a voice in your head. It is late, but yes, I will. I will get the boat to move. Thank you. We'll, we'll set sail tonight. And a few minutes pass, and you feel a light lurch in the vessel as, uh, seemingly, um, as the, uh, the, the navigator, I forget her name, right at this moment, it is Tobin, Tobin Bloodbane. Yeah, Tobin I Bloodbane. I remember things. Hey. There you go. She gets the, sh the piece of ship moving, heading I southwest towards Salinor Islands. I need my boat, though. Oh, oh, oh. we tied it. Can we just say that? I yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, the boat's still I, out there. What are you going to do? send a message Seven. to the navigator. Um, please stop. We need the canoe. We need to bring up the canoe. Uh, 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 please stop. Sorry. Sorry. You feel just... you feel a quick lurch as the boat come, the ship comes to a really quick stop and then lurches to the left. You, you all get, you all get so, tossed to the right. Like a bumper car? Like you just hit the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That quick. Joyce kind of um, sprints to the top deck and looks over to see like how bad we fucked this up. <laughs> Did you tie your canoe to our ship or just anchor it? Uh, didn't I tie it to the ship? <laughs> I knew the canoe you did, but what about yeah. your outrigger? Or uh, well, the outrigger's still out there. I gotta go get. I have to go get it. Okay. <laughs> um, does fine. Does Wimby follow when I go above deck? One second. Yeah. Oh, well, so, you know, are you doing anything? Could you maybe turn do your octopus thing and then go get this ship, bring it back? Ah, uh, we got it. You yell for her, but you don't see you don't see Valsina. She, she's sleeping. She's in the other house. Um, Triscana, <laughs> uh like gives Wimby like a playful look and then dives overboard into the water. Okay, follow her. I was gonna do that anyway. Yeah. So first Triscana and then second Wimby follows directly behind. Both of you just you're so accustomed to this, it is in your nature. Perfect dives into the ocean like Olympic divers. Um, the other three of you see them diving into the water of the edge of the ship, and they barely make a splash. It's like, did they even, did they even enter the ocean? 
Um, so the two of you are currently in the water. Uh, what are you doing? Um, just swimming out, I guess, the outrigger that got left behind to pull it back. Yeah, so you, you both make your way. You swim out there. Super easy. Um, you're so used to this. And you kind of harness yourself to the outrigger. You tie a couple of ropes around your, your shoulders. And then you start to swim back towards a piece of ship, towing this rather kind of heavy heavy outrigger behind you. But between the two of you, I would say you can do it without a strength check. Um, and you get it back to the ship. And what do you do? Um, from down here, I'll work with Wimby to start um, fastening ropes like underneath the, the boat and the outrigger so we can pull them up. All right, so the two of you, you do that. You kind of tether the ropes to it. You position it so it's kind of like propped up against the side, not just hanging there. Um, so that way it's not like bouncing in the water, getting damaged. And yeah, so you have... Like a bike have a on canoe. the trunk of a car. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you have uh, both the outrigger and the, whatever you want to call it, the, the canoe that also goes with the outrigger um, tethered to the side of the, the piece of ship. And uh, the boat, um, Tobin, turns once again and heads uh, towards the Salinor Islands. Let me climb back on board. Triscana looks pleased to be wet. I said it's it. It's cold. Done that. <laughs> so it's currently kind of the middle of the night. So what do you guys want to do? We should get some rest. Um, can yeah, I... it's probably too late for me to get the captain's bed now. You could go Little Spoon if you really had your heart set. Hmm. I'm more like kicking her out of bed. Awesome. Why don't you help me find um, a hammock for Wimpy? Okay. So we'll go below decks and... Do we all have our own room or are we in like the communal bunk room? We had some splitting up. I can't remember what it all was. Rowan was still in the captain's bed. I do remember that. Even though there is a captain, and it's Talia. Yeah. <laughs> Just like curling up like a cat that won't take no for an answer. Yeah. It only works when she doesn't go to bed first, though, so. <laughs> okay, well, I think Triscana was in, like, the communal bunk room towards the back, because it was, you know, least fancy and most like home. So she'll show Wimby and... Do you want the top or the, the bottom? I'll sleep on the bottom if that's okay. Okay. Um, Triscana will pull her bag out from under the bottom hammock and uh, take out a little vial and then just kind of like turn her back and do a thing and then hop in the top hammock. Do I notice uh, Triscana doing this? She's not trying to hide it. I thought we agreed that you weren't going to do it tonight. Did I say that? Yes. I don't remember. You that. said you were going to try it once without, you know, doing the eye drops. Maybe tomorrow night. All right. I thought you said you were going to go a day without poisoning someone. I didn't poison anyone. Oh, no, this Just was all the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try tomorrow. I'd like to volunteer to not be poisoned. Thanks. Well, it's not like—is it poison if it doesn't kill someone? Yes. Really. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you guys see, um, you see Felix von Luckers like walk by your doorway as he's walking down the hallway. He's just shaking his head, muttering like, "Oh, there's talk of poison. Jeez, how are people that get aboard these ships these days." Is he Never a cup feels of safe anymore. <laughs> yeah, he is. Steaming, steaming cup of coffee. Uh, it's not the only one that's gonna be steaming. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> um, yeah, try to kind of say goodnight to our friends and go to sleep and wait okay. to dream. Did you you you, you took your tanglefish venom though, right? Are you saying that in character or out of character? Out of character. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> are you wearing Are you wearing the the bracelet? I am. Okay. I guess good luck. I'm hoping it won't be tonight. I would love to just sleep tonight, but we'll see. 
all night and we'll see you either in there or in the morning. I hope it's just in the morning. <laughs> Hopey is out. Um, so Wimby and Triscana yeah. are both falling asleep. Rowan and Zeph, anything that you want to do or what are you doing? As the night draws long and deep. So why don't they leave the top bunks for the gnomes always? On the top. Oh, I thought that all the bottom bunks were taken. All right, I'll just climb into one. Go There's a lot of three unit bunks, yeah. I'll check mine for dead animals. I didn't leave any this time. Your, your, your bunk is free for. of dead animals. I cautiously get into my bunk despite having not found one. I'm still un, unsure. Okay. <laughs> one time. It's just one time. It only takes one time, Rowan. <laughs> all right. So all five of you make your way into a deep slumber. You're exhausted. You've had a long day. You've had a long few weeks. And a peaceful night like this, again, beautiful night, um, doesn't come along very often. You've had a lot of restless sleeps, being haunted in, in your dreams by the hag. Uh, Wimby, this is your first time. Not sleeping alone. It's kind of welcoming and soothing to hear Holfi's snores. <laughs> and suddenly you have a longing for your for your for your outrigger better to the side of the boat. Yeah, the sleep apnea treatments are lacking here. Yeah, he needs yeah. to see. There's at least like you're counting C-Pat! and there's at least like oh, good... oh no. See Pat. Uh... Uh, so Triscana. I'm going to need you to roll a d10 for me. Oh, right. Let me take a fiver before it gets too interesting. Yep, yep. I don't remember which one the d10 is, because I... That's the one. one Well, because we haven't played in so long. That is a six. Okay. All right. So we will take a uh, brief five-minute break there. We'll come back. In five minutes. Sounds good. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. See you in a minute. And we're back. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. We're having a good time. What, what are we doing, Mike? All right. So uh, the five of you wake the next morning. <gasps> long to... rest? A long rest. Everybody has a long rest. Hooray! Um, Wimby goes from completely fine to completely fine. (laughs) Um, So yeah, everybody is uh, fully healed. And uh, yeah, so what do you want to do? You wake up uh, kind of swinging in the hammocks or the cots, whatever you might be in, in your your rooms. This is weird. I'm used to terrible shit of having happened overnight. Mm. Me too. I feel oddly rested. This is bizarre and uncomfortable. I think Felix had a terrible to... shit that happened last night. Yeah, I feel bad about that. It wasn't meant for Felix. Who was it meant for? I don't know. Everyone else. Oh. What the hell, Ro? <laughs> oh. Like, like I can almost see a, a, a preference for gnomes, but you include me in that as well, so I don't fully understand your... You don't like my presence, so... Your pre- you have to understand, your presence are... Ah, uh, what are they? Uh, I have to choose carefully here because I can receive more of them, but I don't want more of them, but I need to not be mean. Uh, your presents are... Mm, it's a thought that counts. They're, they're thoughtful. What um, are you thinking with them, by the way? Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a good... That's a, an excellent question. They're, they're thoughtful, but they're also... Um, horrifying, I think, is, is a, good, it's a good way to put Ouch. it. I, 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 so, I think it's just maybe, it's a mutual the, the misunderstanding. Bird, I thought you liked to cook. The bird was, I, present to, you know, it. I mean. Okay, so, so perhaps it's not the gift itself, but it's the delivery. I didn't know where else to put it. You only have a bed. <sighs> Anyways. Did my, well, that, I would accept that if it weren't. 
like, in my bed and covered up under the pillow, like... I didn't want him to get cold. <laughs> or dirty. <laughs> Trying to play it straight, but I can't. Or dirty. Well, what, yeah. what, the dead bird, you didn't want to get cold. Because in my... It's Can't. better room temperature. You don't want it frozen. Oh. It's going to be room temperature by virtue of being in the room. <laughs> and under it's under a pillow, it's good. going to be nice and snug. And then his body... It, it, just, would... it just seemed a bit cold that night. I'm sorry. I should have warned you, you that there was a dead bird in your bed before you, before you Thank said. Thank you kindly. Please, please I do appreciate the apology. It. What about the gift oh. you gave me the other day? The gift of a good time? Yeah, oh. those were fun. You were in pain. I thought you had a magic mushroom. I, I, there was a walrus chasing me, and he was, he was, he was from the quite the insistent. <clears throat> it's not, but you're not. Was you there an Eggman as well? Oh, yes. <laughs> Suddenly, all two... the timbers of the entire ship turned back to the trees that they once were, and then each of them were talking to me. Well, that sounds lovely. No, it was horrifying. Ma He's Maeve, I hope you show up for the next session. <laughs> <laughs> I'll absolutely be here. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to laugh. And I am imagining no, do laugh! That's, 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 that's an important element. Please laugh. <laughs> serious <laughs> roleplay does happen, but the, the laughing is important. For I'm... context, you gave me some mushrooms that caused me to, well... He was swinging from the figurehead of the ship. That's what I that have... was. Yes. I have more. Mm -hmm. Please don't give them to him. He's so oh. old. I won't. Uh, uh, I, I, well, 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 so, oh, I'm not, I'm still. No, you I'm are. still got my wits about old? me. I'm You're very older old. than most. But I'm not very old. Why, I'm sorry, why are you taking it as an insult? Like in, you know, in my, in my tribe, like our elders are revered. They are. Well, you are your because they've they... lived an extremely long time. For one thing, yes. I could probably be your, your son, all of you. I don't well, except you, Rowan, I'm you're probably... Not that old. You are definitely older oh. than my dad. Oh, relatively, but Austria, don't they live a long time? Do we? I think you do. I think you're a couple hundred or something like that. Well, I don't you're... think we are. I think we only live to like 150-ish. You you live longer than humans, yeah. You you live, you're like elves, kind of, right? Are, I don't think it's that old. I don't think we're elves. I think it's like 150 You're tops. Elves with skin cancer because of their lifestyle. Oh. Elves, elves live longer than 150? In, in Middle Earth, they lived so hundreds of years or yeah, thousands. Yeah, I think in D&D, they but... live like over a thousand. 400. Oh, no, yeah. You're, you're like 150. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely older than my dad. And I, I'm sorry if that offends uh, you. I just, I, I revere not, you. I respect I you. How old are you again, Hofi? Like 60? Oh, she. Wow. So yes. You're almost as old as my grandma. Oh. <laughs> you would be very much revered in our Gorana. Very much revered, yes. I would love it. If Is your grandma single? Here. You're, Is you're your almost single? dead. Is my grandma Olaf? What? No, what? Sing what? No. Single. Is your grandma single? You know, for Halfie. Um. No, she, I, what? no, she no. Is actually. I do find the web fingers attractive. Perhaps Holfi does as well. She. Do is... you find web fingers attractive, Holfi? Love enough for this lifetime. Thank you. There's no wrong answer here. Holfi <laughs> can. <laughs> Holfi stand. No. At the suggestion of uh, setting Holfi up, he stands up and she kind of storms out of the room. Oh, we've heard his feelings. Okay, maybe we pushed that a little too far. Oh, that's a broken that's... heart talking. Now I feel bad. Fee, you storm out of the room, um, and you see over in the kitchen, Felix von Luckers just kind of like, just like one arm like on the, the kind of the sink, and just like his head just kind of hanging down, and he's just like sipping water, like hand shaking a little bit. He looks hungover. <sighs> You like call yourself the Sirens, okay? Sirens Avenger. What did you say? Did you catch yourself the Sirens Revenge? Uh, is that what they call it? Sonny, I haven't, I haven't slept all night. They must have, must have eaten something bad. 
Well, I'm terribly sorry to hear that. Could I make you something? Do you have any appetite at all? Uh, I could... I suppose I could try to eat something. I... See. I don't know if I could keep it down, though. It's dry. We've got, looks like, eggs, porridge, uh, maybe a bit of pork I could maybe fry up in a pan. Might be good. Bread is usually a good solid thing. This kind of feeling. I just broke my chair. Hold on. That's not good. Well, Felix, you should be a bit more careful. I thought he was handier than this. Yeah. Now you have to fix that. Nailed it. Should... There we go. <laughs> your, your young bones. If you you have the energy to fix me up something, dude, I would appreciate it. Well, Felix, you just made my day. Calling me young. Thank you. Not one seems to think that. Let's see. So I'll get to fix them up something. I mean, it's no secret that you're older, but you have a you have a youthful vigor about you. I wish I still had it. Yeah. Just patching the holes in an old ship like this will probably. Take a, take a beating on the hips. It's hard on the knees, up and down, up decks, down decks. It is. Climb the rope. Right. Well. You know what really drains me healthy. Mm. <laughs> Better than you, actually. But... The emperor. The goddamn emperor. Living in servitude to that guy for decades now. Drains me, you know? You. Yeah. I wouldn't say you're the only one with that sentiment. And how many people have worked their lives, found themselves suddenly looking in the mirror at an old man staring back at them, and wonder what they have to show for it, while Saronor is. Probably building another palace, naming another tract of land that he has never even seen after himself or his daughter. Or who knows what? It's all vanity. Personally, yeah, I'm tired of seeing so much suffering going to appease one belligerent man. That's right. It's all for him, not for us, isn't it? I spent my life keeping my head down taking care of his ships, sailing across this unending ocean, just water. Oh. And he just... There you are. There you oh. are. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired. I'm just tired in general, Hofi. I'm done with it. And you should be done with it. You haven't spent your whole life in service to the Emperor. You still have a bit of living. We old men that have a lot of life left, as you said. There's still a bit of fight in an old dog's eyes. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I could use those those eggs you mentioned after all. You're a bit braver than me. If I were feeling like you did, I wouldn't be going for eggs. But how do you like them? Scrambled, boiled, poached? All Fried. of the above. Scrambled will be oh. fine. Or it's going to taste like shit if I scramble a poached egg and then fry it down in the boil it. All right. And yeah, I in, just a world, to... in a world free of emperors, Holfi, there are no rules. For God's sakes, it's just eggs, man. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so what are the rest of you doing? Matt, do you not have any, like, uh, flashbacks from when we were having to crew the mess, <laughs> making breakfast every morning and... I'm um, yeah. Well, this it's just Felix, so I'm not not as stressed out. And gotcha. Back then, it was just like you know, just chop onions all days, and then you know, do the dishes. Uh, I'm beginning to actually make a little omelet. So I guess uh, back in back in the room, uh, I'm <clears throat> sitting up in my bunk trying to collect my thoughts and thinking about how much closer we are to Salinor Islands and how much further we have to travel. Okay. And whether or not we have enough food and rations and all that on the ship to continue on. Not something we've addressed lately. So you know you'll be arriving at Saladinor Islands probably today. Okay. Yeah. Based on conversations you've had with Topin and Bloodbane, you're, it's, you're approaching it. And today's the day, everyone. We've got quite the laundry list to, uh, to 
deal with on these islands. Are you excited? Terrified. Terrified Being excited? What I might find or what I want. How can I possibly turn these entire islands upside down to find what I'm looking for? I'm, I'm terrified that I won't find what I'm looking for and then be forced to leave. We'll pray for guidance, and I'm sure we will find what we're looking for, one way or another. Yeah. Uh, um, Triscana will... She has stashed somewhere, I think in the kitchen, where they were stowed away, um, just a handful of the plants that she had started growing on the old ship before it crashed. So she's probably gonna spend the morning like hauling them up and like finding any pot she can put together, like stealing it from the kitchen or whatever, but taking them up to the, a crow's nest and start putting a garden together again. Like Very, from the old ship? Yeah. And it's yep. not nearly as much as we had. She lost like most of the seeds, but she still has like maybe the sapling of an orange tree left and a handful mm -hmm. of herbs. Didn't you yep. have the banana? Was there a banana tree or no? Yes. Yes, there was. There's that too. Sure. Yep. Yeah, we'll go with it. Yep. So you, you climb up the crow's nest and you, you spend a good 30, 40 minutes trying to plan all these, place them in the most advantageous spot. The sun, the morning sun kind of casting long shadows on you, uh, starting to warm up the air around you. Uh, as you're up there, you take a look off towards the horizon, and you can just barely make out outline of land. I'll um, look down on the deck, and if I see Wimby, like I'll just kind of whistle and see if she wants to like climb up. Yeah, she would absolutely join you in the crow's nest. By the time you climb up there, like, Triscana's hands are just brown up to her elbows, and you see her, like, pushing her fingers into pots, and then small things just, like, blossom out of the soil as she does. She kind of, like, wipes her hands a little bit. Um, and then, like, as she, like, looks you up and down, she's also kind of, like, mindlessly taking water from a canteen and just, like, magicking it into the pots and just making them, just sprinkling a little bit of moisture on top of them. It's like seeing a ghost. I'm sorry. I. We kind of thought you were dead. It's been a while since I've been able to contact anyone home. The only person who was sending me messages was my dad, and he stopped sending me messages years ago. I, I don't know. He does live. Um... We didn't know what happened to him. Um, no one from the Gorana still knows what happened to him. But losing Fegala and then losing you, he just seemed to completely disconnect with reality. Um, he just got more and more withdrawn and angrier and angrier. I mean, you know he always hated me, but over the years, it, you could tell I was I was a little afraid of him. And then he and a few others, others that had, they also lost a few on the day we lost the gala. And they all disappeared. They took some canoes and vanished. Um, but I actually saw him. Um, there's this Suma. Did you know Suma are real, by the way? You've been living a broader life than I have. I didn't realize because they told us it was just a story when we were small. Did you know? I mean, I figured it out eventually. It's... It's been a lot since I've, since I've left. And I mean, when I first left, I didn't really want to, but you learn a lot when you're on your own for a while. 
I can't imagine what you can teach me because everything I've experienced so far is so strange and so new and these Ostrama are so bizarre. Um, but your father, it's... sorry, um, I saw him working with this Suma that uh, attacked us on more than one occasion. I, he just has left the Gorana completely and I guess he's joined up with them. I don't know why. Did, did he attack you? Specifically? The last thing he said to me uh, as um, our boat was pulling away from his was, I'll kill you. Um, but no, we haven't been closer than that to one another. Not yet. So I guess he's doing okay. I'm glad to hear he's alive, but I mean, I, is there some way I can help him? He seems so lost. If anyone could bring him back, it would be you. I don't know who else he has left. I don't know if he'd feel that way about me. The last letters I got from him were not great. No. He didn't. He seemed to have a really hard time when I left. And I don't know if he really views me as family anymore, but... I hope that's not true. I hope so too, but he... I haven't heard from him in years, so I, I don't know. He wasn't, he wasn't wrong about the one thing. It was my fault and I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's all right, you, you don't have to apologize. I feel like I never have, I'm never gonna be able to stop apologizing. It's nice to see a familiar face. You wear the mask now, is that so? Is that because of the guild? Uh, no, actually, uh, the mask is something different. I'm... You had... I want to help my friends and I spent a lot of time learning how to help others since I've been gone. And I don't think I can heal them, but I want to try. Well, I'll help if I can. My magic's a bit stronger than it was when you knew me as a kid. I can do more than just grow oranges now. And make ice cubes. <laughs> well, do you want some... Sorry, do, do you want some help growing? Some seats. I like that. And we could definitely spend another couple hours up there just like talking and catching up and I'll fill her in on just what's going on with all like the older friends she had and what I know of them and like who's had babies since she left and that kind of thing. And so you do yeah. spend a few more hours up there just chatting and reminiscing. Hopefully you're making uh, breakfast for Felix and having fuck the emperor conversations with him while the next to you as you two eat the two uh guild members sleep resting uh rowan and zeph what are you two doing on this beautiful morning still in the kitchen as well um i'm dumping out the coffee because i'm looking at felix and he really doesn't look good and i'm starting to feel a little bad um and i make him some herbal tea trying to, trying to help um, and then I walk over to Holfi and um, I pass him a one of the feathers that I had from the beginning of our voyage 
I'm sorry, Holfi, for bringing something up. I feel like it hit chord. Um, I'm trying to get better at giving presents because Seth said it's, I'm really bad at it. So I thought that I saw that you had a feather around your neck, and I thought that maybe this one could help you realize that you're still on a journey, and um, that we love you. And sorry. I'll kind of like squat down and everything to the eye level with her. Just take the feather. Not quite sure what Zeph is talking about. I think this is one of the kindest gifts I've ever given. May I hug you? I haven't held, hugged in a long time. I feel like I'd mess it up. You can't. Simple as this. Just I give him a hug too awkwardly. Give her a hug, and Kofi's actually got a few tears. Uh, at that. Did I did I do a bad job? At what? With the bird, the bird was catastrophic. Yes, I think that was. <laughs> that was. <laughs> it's it's not. No, I. You, you're not from a town or anything, are you? You weren't raised in a village or anything like that. I mean, do they give birds in people's beds customarily where you were raised or? Oh, we like went hunting a lot. That was the only way we got food, foraging, hunting. Um, it's kind of the way that we showed that we cared about people. But hunting's kind of lost its flavor for me, so. I'm sorry to hear that. So noble part of your tradition. I think maybe you just haven't found the right quarry. There, maybe I just... Yeah, maybe. I'm trying to find the one I lost. But I'm glad at least I get to search with people again. I feel like I've kind of found a family again. We're on a journey, as you say. I'll wear this to remember that. Well, I'll remember that we're on a journey together. Hope he's gonna take the, uh... What kind of feather is it, by the way? It's, it's a seagull just... feather from Hulfie's bird, or from oh. Zeph's bird. God damn it, I will wear Zeph's bird's, <laughs> the seagull feather, right next to my raven's feather around my neck. So, white and black, just... I'll, uh, Perfect. I'll try to find a better one. No, Just... you couldn't find a better one than this. Thank okay. you, Rowan. You're welcome. Don't expect it too often. No, no. Certainly a much kinder gift than I could have. Wasn't expecting a gift at all. Would you like some eggs, by the way? I'm already cooking up a batch for Felix. Hi. Or. And behind. Uh, oh, 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 man. <laughs> Felix, try the tea. I'll just go and tend to him. Okay. So you make some more eggs as well. And uh, Zeph, what are you doing? So uh, I've just kind of uh, shirked all of this and just gone topside, and I'm at the bow of the ship. Everyone is uh, doing their own thing and having their conversations, but uh, I'm... What's the weather? It's nice. It is beautiful. It's a continuation of the very calm, calm night before. And we're underway. And you're underway. You're still making your way towards Salinor Islands. Yep. Okay. So I'm I'm just at the bow of the ship, just as, as far forward as I can get, while still being safe and not at any risk of falling overboard, and just just kind of closing my eyes and facing up to the sun and just taking deep breaths and knowing that today we're heading to the Salinor Islands and we'll arrive and I haven't seen my 
family and months post suicide attempt and receiving my powers from my patron and just all of it is overwhelming but I'm trying to find calm by taking deep breaths by myself in the ocean and feeling the ocean air on my face as we're underway in the sun and terrified that I will be as close to my family as I have been in months uh, and terrified that I'm not sure if I'll find them and then what it means if I don't. E, the salt air laying restlessly in your nostrils and on your tongue, you find a sense of calm within yourself, an uneasy calm. You question if you're still the same person you were after your long trip over the Siren Ocean and everything you've been through. But what you do know, what you think you know, is that your family is out there, directly ahead, as you can barely make out land on the horizon. You know you're getting close. And if they're there, maybe you can see them now, even if you can't actually see them. Maybe you're looking at them. Seth, can I do something for you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Hi. I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. Were you in meditation? I'm sorry. I keep doing that. It's 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 okay. I I'm just trying to trying to find some sort of calm when nothing is as I expected it to be months ago, and I just hopeful but terrified. And and it seems like everyone has their own reasons for coming to these islands, but I, I feel like none of them are as great as my own. I know what it's like to not have solid footing beneath you. But there's something I'd like to do for you, if you'll let me. Um, and without asking, just intruding in your personal space, she puts her thumbs on your temples and just kind of puts some fingers on your forehead. Does Scalp your... massage? Ew, no. What is that? No. <laughs> Picture your wife. Does she carry an object a, a necklace, a wedding ring. She has a ring. Okay, can you picture it and describe it to me, please? It's very plain. It's kind of white gold with a very simple, simple stone. No ornate fanciness to it at all. Just, mm -hmm. just very basic and plain and smooth. What kind of stone is it? It's a ruby. And how old is it? Like, did you have this made for? Was it a family heirloom? It's been passed down for many generations and okay. more than I could possibly know. Okay. It's a long shot, but I might be able to use my magic to locate it. And if I can locate it, then she might also be attached to it. We'll try, okay? I hope so. I, I wish I remembered if I could still see it on her when I saw her last. What about your child? They probably didn't wear a ring. Don't give up hope. Do you want to pray, or do you want to be left alone? Never been the praying type. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. It's okay. I'll give you some space. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with us. I... <laughs> Zeph wants to say that he didn't really have a choice, but she chooses not to. <clears throat> All right. With that, as you look out across the Siren Ocean, Triscana, Wimby, and Zeph, with Rowan and Holfi down below having breakfast with Felix, the three of you above deck, you notice something as you sail towards land. There's other ships on the ocean headed in the same direction, kind of far off, but they look varied and they look 
large and important. You see ships you recognize from various kingdoms around the world, various regal, regal sails. It seems odd to you that all these ships that look like maybe they're carrying important figures are heading towards the Salinor Islands. You see what looks like symbols of the Dolakan on sails. You see symbols that represent the gold boots, which is Emperor Salinor's army. And then you see uh, sails that bear the, the crest of Emperor Salinor himself. Numerous ships heading towards Salinor Islands. I think that's where we'll call it tonight. Good game, y'all. Okay. Yay. Oh my goodness. I love playing Good these job. people. This is so much fun. <laughs> Welcome, Maeve. Wonderful first hey. showing. Welcome, yeah. Maeve. Welcome, edition. Maeve the Brave. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, this was fun. I don't want to turn this off because I really love this playlist, but. <laughs> Welcome up for Tone Shift, here we go. Um, so smooth. <laughs> well done, Mike. Way to get us back into it. Thanks. So, cat vibe out, that cat vibe meme. So we'll be back in two weeks, <laughs> right? Um, please come back and join us Thursday night, 8.30 Eastern-ish for our second ever episode of The Broken Cauldron, DM by Miss Alicia. Um, that's a charity campaign. And we have fun milestones in the works. So definitely come check that out. Thank you, Raiders, our new friends from uh, Top Down Tabletop. I will be on Top Down Tabletop next month for a Kids on Brooms one shot. I'm so excited about it. Ooh. This will be so much fun living out all my Harry Potter uh, role playing fantasies. Just kidding, I don't have those. I'm an adult. I definitely do. Um, what else? Do we have anything else? Uh, Wimby, you have a healing potion you can add for your inventory, courtesy uh. of. JF Messen. Never heard of him. Oh. Spoiling me. <laughs> and it's I guess like, that's it. Yeah. It's like we always say on Mates of Fate. You look older He's than my close. grandma. Good <laughs> 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 night, friends. Good night, everyone. God damn it. <laughs>